Hello team, welcome to the webinar. In this webinar, we are going to cover automation testing best practices. Thank you for joining the webinar. These are the topics we are going to cover in this webinar today. First, we are going to start with introduction. After that, we are going to look at different stages of automation, like starting with the automation, then planning that, then developing, executing, reporting. Then there are uh, more important areas like maintaining the automation. So once we write the code, once we have the automation, maintaining is like repeating job time to time and for application changes, for new features, whatever we need to maintain the automation. Then we are going to look at top automation testing trends in 2020 and then a conclusion. These are the topics we are going to cover in this webinar today. Let's get started. So test automation is always a high priority task when it comes to software testing and it is evolving rapidly. In software testing, automation is very important task and we need to definitely do that because if you want to repeat the test cases manually it is going to take so much time and resources and money as well so test automation is very high priority then using this webinar whatever best practices we are going to cover in this webinar you can use those uh, practices for better strategies for your automation let's say you are starting the automation in your company or you already have like test automation going on even though you can use these strategies you can use these best practices to enhance that using these best practices you can get very high ROI that is return on investment so whatever you are investing time money resources whatever you are uh, investing you can get a very uh, good returns on that and one more thing these are best practices are not specific to a automation tool or UI automation so you can use these best practices for almost all types of automation so stay tuned and watch till end of the webinar don't miss uh, any part please uh, watch till end of the webinar watch the whole session then we have more important topics coming in the end like maintaining the automation then top automation testing trends in 2020 all these are coming so our first step so this is our first stage starting the automation let's say so far there is no automation uh, in your company or for your project this is your first step you are starting with the automation then we need to consider all these uh, areas mentioned here we need to consider all these uh, very carefully because when we plan very well from the first stage then we can save a lot of effort resources money uh, during the later stages the first thing is automation plan and strategy so when you are starting you need to have very properly uh, written very well planned automation plan and strategy like this is my entry criteria this is my exit criteria and these are the test cases I'm going to automate then what are different aspects we need to consider we need to have a proper plan and strategy so first write proper plan and strategy discuss within your team then discuss with your team lead so as a whole team you need to have proper plan and strategy as part of that you are going to define entry criteria like when we are going to start or what is the criteria to start then exit criteria is like when you are going to stop or at what level you feel happy or you uh, can say like okay so automation is done for these test cases or this much level of our uh, automation coverage is there then the first thing is like you need stable functionality for test cases or features to be automated like you are going to automate these five features or these like hundred test cases they need to be stable if they are not stable then pretty much you cannot automate every time uh, the automated test cases will be failing even manual test cases will be failing so first 
whatever you want to automate either the whole feature or whatever the test cases they need to be a uh, stable and then coming to the test cases we need to have well defined well written and approved test cases it's not like you have just written a test case it's not like that you need to have proper test cases like well defined well written and approved like uh, they are approved by your uh, team or lead or they got reviewed with uh, developers and everyone is happy with that so you need proper test cases so that you can automate them then in, within the test cases you need like proper steps then expected result any other required setup whatever you need proper test cases so that you can uh, start with the automation then coming to the criteria what to automate and not automate this is really uh, important we need to decide like what uh, we have to automate and what uh, we cannot automate let's say we have like 100 test cases then we need to go through those test cases and then we need to first decide like okay so i have like 100 test cases then I need to automate all this but you cannot just automate those 100 test cases overnight or in an hour we need a plan so first like we need to identify what all we can automate and what all we cannot automate if there are any like user experience test cases or usability test cases or like new technology related ones we cannot automate so first for test cases that need to be run one or two times or test cases that are really expensive to automate go for manual testing if there is no repetition required you just need to run one or two times or very rarely for a release then as of now go for manual testing there are more important frequent test cases for automation so we can consider them if there are test cases that need to be run repeatedly like for every build or for every uh, release or daily weekly if there are test cases like important test cases and frequency is also very high then consider them for automation so the entire automation versus manual testing criteria depends upon which is worth in terms of medium and long term so considering the test cases considering manual testing uh, effort and automation testing effort we need to uh, decide what to automate and what not to automate but whatever we have here in this slide this is a very good criteria then going further planning the automation now we are in the second stage planning the automation so we have started with the automation then we have a very good uh, plan then we have what to automate the test cases for automation and they are stable so let's say like for now we have like proper automation plan and strategy we have stable and well written uh, test cases then we know what to automate out of those what to automate and they are properly uh, prioritized so we are starting with a uh, first feature or first set of test cases then we need to plan that so how we are going to plan definitely to automate we need automation tool then we need hybrid automation framework then definitely we want to be a part of continuous integration and continuous testing all these are like current uh, trends like what's happening now what's uh, happening in the market or in uh, real time so first we need automation tool based on your automation requirements automation test plan and strategy you're going to see uh, different tools available in the market like you have like uh, web ui testing or you have like mobile automation testing there are different uh, types so based on that you're going to analyze different tools available like selenium catalan studio ranorax or test complete you're going to analyze different tools and select what is uh, best for you then in the same way you're going to come up with a hybrid automation framework because once you have the automation that is going to be there for years and years it is going to be a long time task so we need a proper hybrid automation framework you're going to see different trends in the market best uh, design patterns software practices all those then you are going to come up with a best hybrid automation uh, for you like we are going to use page object uh, pattern we are going to use data driven framework then we are going to use uh, jenkins may one like that you need to come up with a hybrid automation framework 
then definitely continuous integration and continuous uh, testing you have to implement that we are going to cover that soon then the next thing is like AUT state setup for automation so you need to plan this in advance like what is my application state like you can have some uh, test data in that you can have some test configuration in that you can run in a specific mode so this is really going to help based on your test cases you can have required test data or required configuration or required application state in advance in that application AUT stands for application under test so plan your AUT state in advance so that from there you can uh, start your automation with that it will really save time and effort for you then also we have like test data setup for automation you can use a database or flat files or excel files so when you use data driven framework test data setup is really uh, important so what uh, type of test data you want to have and where uh, you want to save all this is, is really uh, important so how you are going to store the test data and where you are going to st uh, store the test data the structure representation this is also really important then the next thing is like platforms or lab setup so where you want to execute the automation it can be cloud based uh, cross uh, browser testing or it can be like in house uh, lab it can be uh, executing remotely so where do you want to execute even that lab or platforms are set up that properly so that it will uh, save a lot of time and effort later so all these are really important in planning the automation because these are really very important elements and each and everything need to be planned very carefully automation tool that is really important then using the tool you are going to uh, write hybrid automation framework you are going to implement the hybrid automation framework then implement some best design practices software or best practices then definitely continuous integration and continuous testing as well you want to implement so all these areas are very important team going further so let's uh, talk about hybrid automation architecture and uh, layers it is really important to plan this uh, in advance so here is one example when you are going with selenium and web automation a typical uh, structure so use this type of architecture we need to have layers different layers so that each layer is independent and we are following a specific architecture so if you see here we have like four layers so first we have test scripts they are going to talk with the automation framework so in the framework we have like page object data driven then are then there are like other frameworks then the framework is going to use selenium and the selenium is going to drive the browser or web application so with this layered architecture each layer is independent let's say after some time we want to change a selenium tool then only one layer like this selenium layer is uh, affected we can replace this with catalan studio or a test complete whatever so with this layered architecture each layer is independent and we have a specific flow test cases or test scripts they depend upon automation framework then the framework is going to use selenium that is depending on selenium then the selenium is going to uh, drive the web application or browser our test scripts they are not directly interacting selenium they are not directly uh, interacting with browser or web application so test script should not directly deal with uh, web elements or automation tool they are going to go through automation framework so with this layered architecture each layer is uh, independent and each layer is uh, separate and we have a specific uh, flow as well it is layer by layer and we can replace uh, each layer so with this maintenance will be easy replacing a specific layer will be easy then going further continuous integration and continuous testing so this is also really important considering current trends like agile teams and devops teams so this is really important to achieve uh, frequent releases with high quality let's say there is a daily requirement at 9 pm 
developers are going to do all the changes and then commit so by 9 pm like all the dev commits are done then by 10 pm like uh, there is going to be a latest dev build every day there is a daily release by 10 pm you're going to have a dev build then the requirement is like at 11 pm we are going to run all the automated test cases and then send the execution report so that is the daily requirement so try to implement continuous integration like this with this it's like you are testing the daily code changes so by 9 pm all the code changes are, are checked in and then by 10 pm you have the latest dev build and then by 11 pm you are kicking off your automation then all the test cases are executed on that code and then when you come in the morning you have the reports and the good thing is everything is uh, done overnight everything is completely automated we can use uh, industry standard ci cd framework tools like jenkins or there are other tools based on your tool stack you can use whatever framework or tool but jenkins is uh, really a popular one so have continuous integration set up like this with this we are getting daily builds and every night we are executing our automated uh, test cases or test suites and we are getting our reports the next day when you come in then it's like you have the reports ready if they are hosted then even your team lead your team manager everyone can see the reports even you can send emails as well so this is the type of continuous integration or continuous testing uh, you want to achieve with this we can find defects very early every day you are testing the code changes and any issues you can find very early and you can uh, fix them